Hello and welcome to the Aspen video tutorials. My name is Jerome and today we'll walk through the basics of Aspen Plus as well as some simple flow sheeting and process modeling exercises. So let's get to it. On Qt computers, you can access Aspen through the virtual machine program called VMware Horizon Client, shown here. So we can access the virtual machine for Aspen 1 or HiSys using this virtual machine. Just select it. And it will direct you to the virtual desktop where you can access Aspen. To open Aspen, go to Start, go to Aspen Plus, and select Aspen Plus V9. To start display of Aspen Plus, you have this window that asks you to open a file or create a new file. For this instance, we'll just create a new file and do a blank simulation. So upon creating a file, it directs you to the Properties tab over here and into the components menu. So before we go into the components, we'll just look at setup. So under setup, you can specify the title of your model. For this instance, let's say week one. And then there's a global unit set. For this instance, it's METC bar, which is a metric um, unit set. Then if we go to the next option, specifications, it's the same. We can see the defaults used in this specification. All right, we'll not go through these in detail right now, but you can have a look at these all these tabs so you can understand how Aspen is modeling your process. So after setup, we'll go to components. At the start of each process model, we usually specify some set of components that we expect to use. So it doesn't matter if you do the flow sheet first or the components first, but it just makes it easier to do your flow sheet if you already have your basic components. All right. So for this week, we're doing an exercise to compress. So you've been asked by your project manager to determine the utility requirements for a large natural gas processing plant. So using Aspen Plus, determine the power draw, outlet conditions, and specific heat for decompression of natural gas from ambient conditions to 5 bar G at a flow rate of 100 tons per hour and decompression of air to 5 bar G at the flow rate of 100 tons per hour. All right, so this will be our first process model loading Aspen. So we want to model um, a natural gas mixture using the individual component. So also in the exercise, we've given a list of those natural gas components. So here we have methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen with the mole percentage given here. Of course, each type of natural gas would have a different composition. So when you're using a set of data like this, it's important to cite your reference that helps when you're writing the report, right? So to add a component on Aspen, you can click on component ID and type methane. Enter, yep. And then ethane. Uh, 
propane. Butane. Pentane. Hexane, nitrogen, oops, carbon dioxide. So you can either write carbon dioxide or you can write CO2. And oxygen. All right. So if you write a form that Aspen knows, it will automatically link to the component in its database. But if it doesn't recognize what you've um, typed in, then you have to search for the component um, individually. And the way to do that is to click Find and use these search criteria. So for example, I want to search for isobutane and click Find Now. Then Aspen will search through its databases and list the compounds matching those um, criteria. So you can select isobutane or some other um, compounds that match what you want. So even if you know just a little bit about your compound, like, oh, you know, it's um, isobutyl benzene, you can search that. You can search um, the alias, which is basically the chemical formula. Um, and, and many things. And then when you have this, um, these results, you can search, you can um, sort it by alias. So some order of the molecular formula, you can search it, you can, um, sorry, filter it alphabetically, right? You can fill, you can um, sort it using um, molecular weight or boiling point in case you're um, looking for a similar compound using boiling point or molecular weight. So quite a few things that you can do um, in selecting your components. And then while we're at this window, you can also go into the data banks. And this lists all the available data banks where you can search your components. And this is not only a list of potential components that you can use, but also includes the physical and chemical properties that Aspen needs to calculate thermodynamic properties or um, separation ratios, stuff like that. Right. So usually if um, you can't find the component you want to use using the default data banks, you can add other um, data banks. For example, we'll add this data bank, APV90 Pure 20, select that click on this button and it um, adds to the data packs. Right. So we've got all our um, natural gas components on this list. Um, then so what to do next? Um, just click the next button. And it goes to method specifications. So in Aspen, if we see uh, icons like here in this panel, we see folder icons with checks and window icons with checks. That means that all the data needed for your model to run is complete. So that's done. Specifications is done because we just did that. But methods, because we haven't done methods, it has a red circle. Um, which is half filled with red and half is white. So that means we still need to put in some 
information. Right. So in the method specification tab, we can select property methods and options. This links to the equations of state that you want to use to calculate thermodynamic properties, transport processes. So here you can, um, in this tab, you have method filter. You can select a variety of different um, filters depending on um, the application. And what's helpful with Aspen is that um, it provides some information when you hover certain stuff. So for instance, if we hover over a method filter, it gives you some information which says commonly used property methods, use property method selection, method assistant, um, property, sorry again, property method selection assistant for help. It's the same with drop down um, menus. So not the complete picture, but some sort of description. Right. And if I wanted to know more, I can. Um, so in this menu, I can press F1. And help comes up and the um, Help menu for Aspen is very helpful in explaining what the things are if you're just starting out using Aspen or if you wanted to find out what each item um, on, on the window or on each tab uh, works, you can press F1 and use the comprehensive um, manual. You can also search for uh, whatever, so we can say methods for instance. It can pull up articles um, related to methods, right? So it works just like your typical help menu. But since Aspen is quite um, the functionality is quite broad, um, for someone who's starting to use Aspen, this is really helpful. All right. So for this exercise, we'll just select Unifac under base method. Unifac. So it's a pretty wide ranging, um, in terms of like application, it's a pretty wide ranging method to use for chemicals. All right. And when we selected Unifac, you'll notice that we got a blue tick there. There's a blue tick there. And so when we click the next button, it'll say that it's ready to run your property analysis. So just click OK. It brings you to the control panel where it shows you what it's doing. All right, and later we'll see that the information in the control panel also gives you a hint about like how your simulation was processed. So if there's an error, or if there's a warning, this is where you'll find out um, what happened. And so it helps you to debug or troubleshoot your, your model. All right, so the control panel says that um, table generation was completed. It means that the estimation was completed. Okay. So another thing while well, we're at the properties um, tab, you have lots of different um, areas here if it's a very simple model like what we have what we have here you don't really need to change much but for example um, if you're modeling a particularly complex molecule you have to specify the molecular structure um, if you're working with petroleum you usually use um, assay blend light and properties uh, petrol characterization through the components, all these stuff. All right. Yep, and then under methods, there's more detail into um, what the data is here, pure components, binary interaction, 
if it's applicable. So, so far, nothing's um, applicable, so all the menus are blank. Alright, so when that's done, we can move on to the next step, which is simulation. Alright, so in the simulation tab, this is where we draw our flow sheet. And um, that's um, how we construct our Aspen model. Alright, so looking back at the exercise. Um, what do we have to do here? Right, so we need a natural gas processing plant compression. Okay, so when we're starting with the process model, we have to look at the model palette. So the model palette will contain the icons for each um, unit operation. So it's organized in different tabs. So we have mixers and splitters, separators, exchangers, columns, reactors, pressure changers, manipulators, solids, and so forth. So um, for this, we're using pressure changers because we want some compression, and that changes the the pressure. It's quite logical how this is organized. We have different kinds of um, unit operations here. For this instance, we'll use a compressor. So that's a compressor. Um, you'll notice that there's a drop-down arrow beside the icon. So you can choose different icons there. So sometimes it's just a matter of appearance. So that's, um, that looks like compressing. This looks more like a turbine or an expander. But some, um, some choices will lead to like different settings. But we'll discuss that later. So for now, we we'll just click COMPR or compressor, click that, and that allows you to put a compressor on your flow sheet. Right, so we put the compressor there, and it's been assigned the, la the label B1, right, which is for a block, block one. That's already automatically added to this list. So this is showing that we have this block B1, but B1 still needs more information. All right. And we can resize the icon by dragging on the border. So we have a more legible um, block. All right. So we have your unit operation. We now need to add streams. So to do that, we'll add a material stream. So over here on the model palette, click on material, and it enables you to add a material stream. And to do that, just click anywhere, and then drag the cursor towards your block. So usually you connect to the red arrows here, and the red arrows um, are this the required streams for the block. So for the block to work, you need to connect all the red arrows to streams. So we have the inlet flow, and we also need an outlet flow or a product stream. Yep. All right. So here, when we made these two streams, it's been automatically um, assigned a label stream 1 and stream 2 um, and that's um, automatically added to the stream list so you have streams there 1 and 2 so you notice here that stream 1 has a red circle and that means that we need more information again um, stream 2 however doesn't have any red circle because Aspen knows it's a product stream and the information needed for product 2, or for stream 2 rather, will be calculated using the information we put in stream 1 and block 1. 
All right. Um, if we want to use the cursor to move anything from the flow sheet, so right now we're in like a drawing cursor, which is the cross, and we've selected material. So each time I click on the um, flow sheet screen, um, since I'm on material, um, it will just draw a stream there that we might not want. All right, we can just exit that by right clicking. Same with if I click a unit operation, it will just automatically and immediately add an icon if I click on that. All right, and to exit that, you can choose the arrow cursor there which is to cancel insert mode. You can use that to delete any unwanted blocks that we have, blocks or streams. So click that, press delete, confirmation, yeah, so it's gone. All right, now that we have this, we can select next, um, click next. So it used to be there, go to home, and it's there, next input can also press F4 or we can also um, click the N icon there so either of those is fine and it directs us to um, the information input for stream 1 all right so speeding through we have um, compression compression of natural gas from ambient conditions Ambient conditions means um, temperature of, let's say, 21 degrees Celsius and one bar. So the pressure here is absolute pressure. So if it's in ambient conditions, it's atmospheric pressure or one bar, right? And we have a flow rate of 100 tons per hour. And this by default says mole. So we can just change it to mass. And we can say 100 and then change the unit to tons per hour. All right. So we can see here that um, we can just input the numbers there and specify what units we want to use. So even if we've set up our model to have outputs in a certain unit set, like metric or English or SI, we still have free reign over um, what units we use for the inputs. So we have information in Fahrenheit, we can definitely use Fahrenheit, right? Or if we have a different pressure unit, we can use that. And it will just convert those units into whatever you specified your output unit should be. And also caution for um, for certain units. So you have to remember that ton is metric. So T-O-N and E is metric, while T-O-N-S is um, imperial or English units. You just have to take care with that. And you also have the same unit with a different time basis, so tons per day, tons per hour, tons per operating year, tons per year. So just make sure you're selecting the right unit. All right, and then we want now to model a natural gas mixture using composition. So what we have on our exercise information is Molar composition of natural gas. So we have methane, ethane, propane, all the components we added earlier and the mole percent there. So just refer to your copy. Um, I'll just enter the values here. We select um, mole fraction, which is equivalent to mole percent. And we can put, um, so, in your information sheet, you have 95%, 95 mole percent methane, so we can input that as 0 0.95. Ethane is 0 
propane is 0.2%, so that's 0 0.002. Butane, 0 0.003. Pentane, 0 0.0015. Hexane, 0 0.0005. Nitrogen is 0 0.01. Carbon dioxide, 0 0.00. And oxygen is 0 0.02. No, 0 0.0002. Cool. Alright, so you can also see that um, Aspen has summed all the, all the values. So you can see the total is 1. If you have this information in a spreadsheet, you can go select that column, copy it, and then paste it on Aspen. It's quite a nice trick if you have a large amount of data. You don't want to spend too much time, you know, typing all the numbers, especially if it has lots of zeros like that. You can just go copy and then paste. Just make sure that the data aligns with um, the components. Right, so we're done with this, I think. Yep, so streams are all blue ticks. Stream one input, so we can go next. All right, and it brings us to the specifications for the compressor. All right, so for this, it can be either a compressor or turbine. For this instance, we want a compressor for the type. Um, for this one, we'll just select um, isentropic using ASME method and now we can specify what um, what we want for this block um, uh, for this exercise we want a 5 bar G outlet so that's discharge pressure so 5 bar G um, as we've said the pressures in Aspen are in um, atmospheric pressure, or uh, sorry, absolute pressure. So if we add one bar as the atmospheric, as atmospheric pressure to the five bar G, it's a total of six bars. Here, for efficiencies, um, so it, the default value is 0.72 for isentropic efficiency. For mechanical, it's one. Depends on what your reference is. For this instance, we'll use 0.8. And for mechanical, we'll use 0.9. So it just gives you a more realistic um, result if you use properly referenced values. And now we have blue ticks on compressor there, there, and there. And if we click next, it will prompt us to run the simulation. Yep, so all required input is complete. We can run the simulation now or enter more input. So this will appear even if there's there are blanks in um, your setup windows. It's because you've already put in the required amount of information. So if you have more information that you want to put in to make your um, your model more accurate, you can do so. You can say cancel and then add more input, or you can just run the simulation as is. So we'll just click OK at this point. So again, it goes to the control panel and it shows you what it's doing. All right, so just focusing a little bit on control panel. It says processing input specifications, flow sheet analysis, computation order for the flow sheet, it just went to B1 because that's the only block we have. So in, in, in future uh, modeling, you'll see more blocks there. And if you have something like a loop or an iterative um, calculation, you'll see like it goes to this order of um, blocks where it calculates and then it goes back to a previous block and then goes through the cycle again. So you can see if you're debugging or troubleshooting, you can trace where the calculation is going and where it's going wrong. For Yeah, just in case you have 
those errors. Right? Um, yep, yeah, and it says simulation calculations completed, no warnings, no errors, and we have a result. So what result do we want here? We want to um, determine the power draw, outlet conditions, and specific heat. So we just go to main flow sheet. Um, on the side, you can see results there for the stream and results for the block. So we'll just go to the block for now. All right, so we can see the results there, indicated horsepower, by horsepower, network required, power loss. So it's a quite um, huge set of information there. We have outlet pressure, which is what we want, outlet temperature. So um, yeah, so outlet conditions. All right. So for the power draw, we look at network required, which is one two two five three point seven kilowatts. Um, quite big. We can possibly change the units to megawatts. All right. So that's more legible. Twelve point two five megawatts. Right, so and yeah, and so another feature there is that you can change um, the unit. So for example, if you're buying equipment from the US, they'd probably have it um, maybe an MMBTU, which is millions British ther British thermal unit per hour. Um, could be a specification they ask for, or if you're buying something from Europe, it could be in kilowatts or in megawatts. So quite a few choices there, which is cool. So you have 12.2537 megawatts there, right? So just to summarize that information, we can put it in Excel. 12.257. And then our outlet temperature is 187.45. Or 187 187.46. Outlet pressure in MPA. So we have six bar there, and we can change that to MPA 0.6. And we also want the specific heat. So for that, we go to, because uh, it's not here, we go to results of the stream. So stream one, it's pretty much what we put in. It also calculated things like molar enthalpy, mass enthalpy, entropy, density. So you have some information there. You have average molecular weight, wall flows, automatically calculated there. Uh, mole fractions, this we know because we specified it. And the same can be done for the product stream. So you can see all the, the values of your stream there. All right. Um, so let me just get to finding the specific heat. So if we're on flow sheet, on the flow sheet, we click the stream. And then we go to stream analysis and select point. So this will calculate the properties of the stream at that particular state it's in. So temperature, the temperature and pressure that it's calculated to be in. So for this instance, we'll just use mold flow basis and cal calculate thermodynamic and transport properties. All right, so we get something like temperature, pressure, vapor fraction, and so forth. Right. And we just want um, a specific heat, which is um, CPMX, but it's in Calmol Kelvin. I want it in kilojoules. Um, okay, let's just say kilojoules for 
per kilomole Kelvin. And it's 45.3696. Right. Okay. So we have those information for natural gas. We completed that in Aspen. Alright, so if you can't get to that, sometimes um, when you change something on your flow, sh flow sheet, um, all the calculations um, get wiped. So even if you do stream analysis, nothing will come up. So what you need to do is just to run the simulation. If I click next and it says my simulation has completed normally, then it should churn out those information. But if it um, asks you if you want to do the simulation again, then you're on the right track. Just run the simulation and then select the stream, select stream analysis, and it should give you the information. Right, just going um, to the next one, compression of air to 5 bar G at a flow rate of 100 tons per hour. So just looking at the composition of air here, <clears throat> excuse me, we have nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, and neon. So of this set, we do just don't have argon and neon specified. So again, we'll do that. We'll go to properties, Properties tab and specifications, and we just want to add argon and neon. Right, and then once we've added that, we can go back to simulation and still using the same um, compressor model, we just need to change the properties of this stream. Right, so we can go there and click input. And we can just remove um, all these. Um, say zero, zero, zero. Um, for nitrogen, we have a mole fraction of point seven eight oh eight four. For CO2, we have 0.000314. For O2, we have 0 0.209476. Argon is 0 0.0094. And neon is 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Right, so quite a lot of information there. <clears throat> Very specific values of CO2, argon, and neon. Um, this is um, the granularity of your data depends on the application. So if you're compressing air for like an air separation unit, then you need very accurate um, information to specify like how much nitrogen is there, how much oxygen is there, how much argon neon or whatever. If you're just using air for combustion, then you can get away with just specifying the molar fraction of nitrogen as 0.79 or yeah 0.79 and oxygen is 0.21 and that should work um, quite nicely. Um, but for, for this instance we're using um, this amount of data for her, for our air, right? So that's a blue tick there, and you can see that these folders that we've already set up has this yellow diamonds. It says that we've changed something in the model, right? So if you want to go back to the results of the simulation, it's not going to return um, any anything that. Um, reflects what you've changed. So the values here still pertain to the previous simulation or previous run of the simulation. So it can't be relied on. But now you have these new data. We just click next again, asks us the same thing, and it runs through the simulation. 
takes quite a bit to, to do that. Um, didn't go to control panel, but here it says results available and you can click on check status. Yep. Um, yep, so no warnings, no errors. So I think we're pretty good. So we just have to look at um, the results again. Another way to do that is to click your block, for instance, and do results. It gives you the same information we saw earlier, um, horsepower, network, and outlet temperature. All right, so we have um, network required 7,615 kilowatts. In megawatts, it's 7.61582. So it's smaller than um, what we need to compress natural gas for the same throughput. So it's also 100 tons per hour less power draw. Outlet temperature 263.617, 263.617, so it's much hotter than natural gas. Outlet pressure in MPA, point six, and then specific heat, um, we'll do the same again. So selecting stream 2, I'm going to home tab, stream analysis, point. And we get 7.18881 or 7.19. Sorry, have to change units. 30.0981. Right, so you can see um, the differences between compressing natural gas and air um, from the same input conditions to the same outlet conditions. They just have different compositions those. Alright. Now, um, we'll just go briefly. Um, let's do part B um, quickly. So this is just a sort of an exercise on flow sheeting. You have um, a block diagram or, or a PFD like this, where you have this um, liquefied natural gas storage in the tank. Um, your liquefied natural gas is stored there. You have some vapor on the top, and the vapor goes through a BOG compressor to liquefy, you no, know, to um, compress that vapor so it can go into a um, refrigeration unit like this. And then the liquefied um, gas goes back to storage. All right, and then you also have a stream there that goes to um, a separator where the um, gas and liquid is further separated. Gas goes up to the boiler and the liquid goes back to the, to the tank. So we'll just design a simple analog of this. Um, the key things here would be the compressor, which we've already put in. So a compressor goes into uh, um, unit operation such as this with two streams. So that's probably going to be a heat exchanger. And again, we have different options for a heat exchanger. You have one that's very simple, which requires a stream in and a stream out. Which is a, so that's called a heater. We have more elaborate heat exchangers there, multi streams. Um, this one's the most useful. 
So two stream, I'm going to select that. Okay. And then, um, so just looking at that, so that's, let's just say that's the warm stream getting cooled and that's the cold stream getting heated from, um, from heat exchange. So this stream, which is our warm or our hot stream, can be connected to the heat exchanger. So if I just select that, um, right click and go reconnect destination I can reconnect that into one of these ports so since that's the hot stream I'd connect it to hot and then make an outlet stream for the output of that stream so I have the option to use that cold cold I'll just select this one which is hot so you have hot there and hot there. That means this stream goes through your heat exchanger and exits there. And I have to make two streams for our refrigerant, which enters through the cold ports and exits through the outlet cold. So that's our heat exchanger set up. Um, we also wanted to model this flash separator for the um, natural gas stream going out. All right, so let's actually leave that. We can use one of these separators. So we'll select a flash separator, put that in, um, resize. Yep, and then select, right click, choose reconnect destination connect it to the feed and then select another material have a vapor stream there that's possibly going to your boiler and a liquid stream going back to your tank okay All right so we won't run this simulation because it's just a flow sheeting exercise but some of the stuff I guess that we need to know for flow sheeting to make your your flow sheet more legible and more organized. Um, you can change the orientation of your blocks. For instance, we want this to be vertical, so we can right click and rotate icon. Yeah, that could work. We can drag the start points of your streams like towards the right, if that's um, better. Yep. Then we can drag the arrows around to make it more um, legible. Um, we can also um, do large rotates or flips. So same thing, right click, rotate, and then flip. Just to make it more organized. Um, there um, we can also redirect the arrows so for example um, this one looks weird because it um, intersects with this stream so I might want to move this um, outlet so what I do is zoom in by pressing alt and then scrolling and then I want to select my stream and click on the arrow here and then drag it so I can drag it to the position where I want it to be it doesn't affect the calculation it's all just presentation so it just looks more legible right if I have a like a crooked stream there I can also click on the stream right click and select um, align block doesn't do anything there. Um, you can also click we're out stream. Doesn't do anything. Yeah, so just clears your um, flow sheet of like, unnecessary corners and curves. 
and then you can also name or rename your streams um, so we can select just like right click that box and then type in not gas of course it will have a character limit mm. you can select this compressor name double click and say blow off gas compressor and so forth Then um, we've already done this, change the size. Usually your main unit operations are large in your PFD, and then the auxiliary ones are just small. So feel free to change um, any of those just to make your flow sheet more legible. And it helps when you have, um, if you have developed your, your whole plan and you have all these blocks and streams, just helps to be organized. Um, so on your exercise, there's a much um, more complicated flow sheet. I'll leave you to do it on your own, in your own time. Um, you don't need to specify any of the components or whatever. It's just um, a practice on translating this PFD or this block diagram into an Aspen flow sheet. So you'd be more confident to do that later on your own when you're making your project or or in future when you're um, doing this for your job, right? So that's the first um, Aspen video. Hope you um, learned something and see you next time.